From the frozen landscapes of Greenland and Antarctica, scientists are extracting clues to Earth's past climate from deep within the ice. Cylindrical cores containing a wealth of evidence are transported to Denver's National Ice Core Laboratory, where samples are prepared for researchers at labs across America. The resulting data fuels models that help us better predict the climate of the future. We have ice cores from the polar regions of the world in, in our facilities as well as we do have some from Alaska and I do believe um, Wyoming. As a manager, look at myself as a facilitator of science, making sure that our staff here at the Nickel can go ahead and provide scientists with what they need in order to answer those very interesting science questions. The big goal of this ice core project so that we can look back in time at big climate changes that were naturally forced, so we can understand how our climate system operates, so we can understand what it will do in the future. Basically, we're unpacking the ice, so we have to pull each piece out. Um, so what we're doing is double-checking everything that was done in the field. We're measuring the top of the ice to the bottom of the ice, as well as V-checking all of the index marks. Uh, we're also measuring any breaks or other notable features within the ice. Uh, so we get everything aligned, and then we do all the measurements. It enters into the database, and then we can send it on down so it can go through its first cut to the horizontal side. Done pulling off some ice for ways to vibe. Got the chemical piece, ice toe piece, main archive ready to get plain, and then do the ECM machine. conductivity. And so doing this, we can measure tens of thousands of years of the ice core. My name is Jen Lennon and this is my third CPL. Um, I have been in charge of the imaging machine every year and basically what the imaging machine is supposed to do is it takes a really high resolution image of each ice core. And the reason that's important is because 
usually when the scientists study the ice, it's kind of a destructive process. And they're so high resolution, you can zoom in and look at the bubbles and look at the fractures and pick out the annual layers. And that's how um, the imaging machine is helpful. Yeah, I'm Matt Spencer and I work with the physical property team. And this is the visual stratigraphy booth. And we have to look at every section of ice. We have to lay our eyes on it because we don't know what we're going to see. Look for things like ash layers, but we map everything, you know, every little fracture, every little break. But we're also trying to pick up an annual signal. So I'm looking for any any change in the ice that seems to reflect seasonal variation. Yeah, we want to see a winter summer, winter summer contrast going through. But when you have ECM and you have visual, and then once you get chemistry down the road, you stack all those records on top of each other, and the annual signal it's it falls out pretty nicely. There's a special illumination system that will reveal the internal structure of the ice that we've just made a very thin wafer of. And what you're going to see are the individual crystals of ice through the lens of the camera. And what the color is depends on a combination of the thickness of the ice that's in the sample and on the crystallographic orientation of the structure. So two grains that are right next to each other like this that have very different colors um, are physically oriented in space differently. Okay? And that's important information to know. That also affects how the ice will flow, whether or not all the grains are oriented in a similar direction or they're oriented in very different directions. So uh, my name is Murat Aydin. Uh, I'm an associate researcher at UC Irvine. Uh, this is the gas station at the core processing line. What we're trying to do here is uh, measure samples for three different labs to make uh, methane, methane isotope, and carbon dioxide measurements. Of ice um, that's been sampled during this core processing line, or actually more specifically, what's left over from the sampling. We put it pretty simply, I just put it in the tube, and then we put the tube in the back freezer for long term storage. What we will now start to do, and, and in effect have already started to do, is bring the individual pieces together to try to build a coherent picture. Uh, of what's going on and what the paleoclimate record is that's contained in this core. What this is eventually connected to is the behavior of the ice sheet under changing climate conditions. That's what we want to understand, what we want to know. Um, and the reason that we want to know that is because for ice which is grounded on land, such as the Antarctic ice sheet, um, how the ice sheet behaves in a warming climate is eventually what's going to control, to a large extent, sea level. Uh, and sea level is where people come back into the equation. So you're starting with the microscopic and microstructural characterization of the ice sheet itself. And where you get to is people living in cities on coastlines. And that's what it's all about. 